We've tracked these roughing the passer penalties since 1991. Here are the numbers. So through week three of the NFL season, if you're going to compare this with other seasons, this is far and away the highest total we've had. 34 roughing the passer penalties called through week three of the NFL season. Second, uh, 2006 with uh, eight fewer. Uh, then 2011 was 25. So it's 34 right now through three games or three weeks. And then uh, goes down to 26, 25, 24, 22, a bunch of 22s in there. So we're, uh, we're, we're at a pretty high frequency rate and doesn't look like there's any end in sight. Here is Ben Roethlisberger after last night's win over Tampa talking about that. You know what, I'm, I don't want to, to, to criticize officiating, especially when you're talking about a penalty that, that helps the quarterback out. But, um, you know, I was surprised with the first one. Uh, the second one I thought was legit, he hit me in the helmet. But uh, there sure are a lot of them. I can't imagine the fans at home are enjoying it too much. No, no, we're not. And the reason why we're not is we don't know what is real. We don't know what is a penalty and not a penalty. And that's part of the frustration. When you're watching, you're going, wait, is that a, is that a penalty? That not a penalty. There was a hit on Aaron Rodgers in the game against Washington where I went, well, that's got to be a roughing the passer penalty. And then there wasn't. But then Clay Matthews with the hit on Alex Smith. Now, I thought that that was, with the new rule, I thought that that, if you're going to enforce it, I would have called, I would have flagged him for it. Uh, I don't know about the intent. The other part of this is the hit that he had against Minnesota and Kirk D. Cousins, to me, was not a penalty. That's the frustrating part. It just feels like it's open to interpretation. And I think that's really difficult to call. We know you can call holding. We know you can call pass interference on every play. You can't call roughing the passer on every play because you don't get to the quarterback. But when you do, have a clear delineation, a clear definition that says this is what it is. Because right now we don't know. And I don't think that's fair to NFL fans. All right, uh, poll question, McLevin. What do we have? Okay, do you think the NFL will pull back on this? It's now down to 58% say yes, they will pull back. Yeah, I think they're going to do something. Um, usually what happens is you go in heavy with a heavy dose, and then all of a sudden you start to you know, ease off a little bit here. And you get into meaningful games. I think that's going to be – you just don't want a game. Imagine a playoff game between the Packers and the Vikings that came down to a roughing the passer call. Or a Super Bowl that comes down to roughing the passer. And quarterbacks are playing a role in this too, folks. Because Ben got hit with a hand last night to the helmet. Now it's illegal. Ben went down. Ben doesn't go down when he's got three guys hanging on him. But he got hit in the top of the helmet and he sold it. Yes. He and in the soundbite, Ben says he's, that was the right call. They should have flagged him there. He's like, hey, he hit me in the head, should have been a flag. Well, if you hit them in the head, yes. But did Ben have to go down? No. Don't we marvel at Ben never goes down? All of a sudden, you hit him in the top of the helmet, and it's like, oh, my God, he went down. That's how you get the big guys down, hit him in the head. Yeah, apparently so. All right, uh, here's Gerald McCoy. I never thought I would hear this. This is mid-hit on Ben Roethlisberger in the end zone last night. Here's Gerald McCoy, defensive tackle, going up the middle. And he's getting ready to hit Ben Roethlisberger, and he says this. My fault, Ben. Hey, my fault, Ben. My fault, Ben. My fault, Ben. Hey, he wanted to make sure everybody knew it's not a cheap shot. You want the official to know more than you do Ben Roethlisberger because the official is the one who's going to flag you. But here you are mid-tackle, and you're saying, my fault, Ben. Yeah, Paul. Doesn't this all go back to... The start of last season when Brady was out, Manning was gone, uh, other quarterbacks were out, and it was hurting the ratings. One of the reasons it was hurting the ratings, I think, I don't think the NFL is going to back off much on this rule at all because they could afford to be criticized. They can't afford not to have star quarters playing in nationally televised games. That's where the money comes in. Like, they'll take heat. Well, I think you had a couple of things in play, and certainly the quarterbacks not in play hurt the ratings. Absolutely. It's just like the 49ers. 49ers have nationally televised games, and I think it's week six, seven, eight, nine, ten, maybe. And they're going to be on Thursday night, Sunday night, Monday night. And that's because of Jimmy Garoppolo. You're not tuning in to watch the Niners with C.J. Beathard the way you are with Jimmy Garoppolo. Just not happening here. But you had debates. You had the flag issue, Colin Kaepernick. Those things factored in as well, people not watching. 
you want to make sure, and the NFL knows this, this is a business decision. That's all this is. Hey, criticize us all you want. We want to protect the stars. You're not going to go see the Rolling Stones if Mick Jagger's not out there. You're just not. It's the E Street Band and no Springsteen. The NFL knows this, and that's why they are protecting these quarterbacks. Are they going above and beyond the call of duty? Yes, because they want these defensive players to... Same thing with the helmet rule. They want you to adjust. They want to, they want to make sure that you're not landing on the quarterback, you're not leading with the crown of your helmet, all of these things. All safety precautions. And you can't have it both ways if you're the players. you got former players saying, what about us? We're disabled. Nobody takes care of us. Nobody cares about us. We've been discarded. And then you have the current players saying, come on. This is soft. Flag football. You know, let the quarterbacks wear skirts. You can't have it both ways. You have to protect when you can protect. But I don't want them to make a mockery of a rule that we don't know the definition of. That's where it's, if you said this is what the definition is, great. But if you can tell me that Clay Matthews hit last week is the same as the one the week before, I think you're crazy. Yeah, see. It seems like the officials know exactly what the definition, because they, every time they make that call, they say, well, the way the rule is written, this mm. is the right call. The way the rule is written, this is what it's supposed to be. I just think that the officials go, if it's close, we're calling it. That's it. So adjust accordingly. Play like Von Miller and Khalil Mack do and go for the football. Don't go for the jugular. Don't go to try to knock them out. Don't put all your body weight on them. Because I do think that I've, I've railed against that for years. I think it's a cheap shot by defensive players when they do that. When I have you wrapped up and I'm going to pile drive you into the ground. Okay? It takes talent to get to the quarterback. It doesn't take talent to have a defenseless player and you try to, you know, land all 300 pounds on him. It's just... I find, I, I find that, that gutless. For more Dan Patrick Show, tune to Audience Channel 239 on DirecTV or download the Dan Patrick Show app.